You know why tonight's Warehouse is a very special show? Two words. Matthew Kelly. Oh, yeah. Like Jimmy Savile before him, he's a, he's a grantor of dreams. Tonight, Matthew, I want to be a showbiz legend. Oh, I already am. But you see, when people are young, they want to be one of two things. They either want to be a, a footballer or a singer. With me, of course, it was the latter. Because football's never been my cup of courvoisier. You just look at these shoes. There's no studs on these shoes. That's because it's the stud who's wearing them. Because as a child, I was far too fond of my Pierre Cardin cable stitch sweater to lay it down in the mud as a gold post. Instead, my childish imagination was caught by the razor-sharp creases in the snow-white slacks worn by old people who played bowls on the many bowling greens that bejeweled the coastline betwixt Frinton and Galston. You never saw a dirty tackle or a muddy fracas on any of those verdant lawns. Ugh. A million miles away from the fat-thighed homo erotic horseplay of the loutish soccer leagues. But you see, some people are obsessed with soccer. Like my former double-act partner, Frankie Tan. And he once had a trial for Ipswich. He got off with 180 hours community service. <laughs> He's no stranger to the kickoff. He's been kicked off stages worldwide, mostly for displaying his foul tackle. But you see, I don't understand young footballers today. It wasn't like in my day. You look at someone like Beckham, wandering around France in a dress with posh spice on his arm. It's hard to imagine Bobby Moore, let's say, mincing around Wembley in a Mary Quant miniskirt with Lulu on his arm. And you can't imagine Sir Stanley Matthews locked in a cubicle in string fellows, hoovering up nose candy through a rolled up 50 with Suzanne Mitzi on his arm. It just wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't even got into string fellows. Not wearing shorts like those anyway. Because in my time, I have worked with some great footballing greats and there's not a transvestite amongst them. True, I did spend three months with Saint and Greavesy while they were wearing dresses, but they were playing the ugly sisters to my buttons at the Chichester Festival Theatre back in 82. How once I shared the Wogan sofa with a young Kevin Keegan, but I tell you now, he'd have slapped anybody in the movie who suggested he wore anything but his regulation Grey Farrah slacks. Well, we have had one off the wall night one way or another. Time to be brought back down to earth with a bit of homespun wisdom and a bit of basic reality from Lenny Beige. Once again, what a, what a veritable international smorgasbord of talent the warehouse is. We've had an Asian soap star singing, we've had a, an African dance band, we've, we've had a Welsh comic, certainly the best thing to come out of Wales since the M4 motorway, and a reggae singer, and now the greatest Jew in the entertainment business. I Lenny Beige, you know? You know, I truly believe in the brotherhood of man. Or the hood, as they're now known. I embrace all cultures. I don't know if you saw me on last year's Celebrity Ready Steady Cook when Ken Hom and I sang Walk on the Wild Side together. Only this morning I was making a mutton biryani with the lovely Matt Jaffrey on a cooking program on Granada Plus. And I wish you could come with me to Manila to see my historic performances at the legendary club Sucky Fucky. They don't pay me very much, but my God, you should see the backstage hospitality. You see, I'm no bigot. I don't want to talk to you about the Eurovision Song Contest. You know, if I want to watch hairdressers from Dusseldorf or geezer chicks from Tel Aviv spouting childish innuendo and performing lewd amateur gymnastics in front of rows of middle-aged men, I'm going to borrow a video from my dear friend Jordi Gunther, the German porn star. I'm not going to search such filth out on primetime television. And even if I was to borrow, let's say, Butt Babes, Brown Hole, Bonanza, Volume 3, the music on that film would probably be a damn sight better than on the Eurovision Song Contest. You know, there are quizzes on Channel 5 with better theme tunes than most countries offer on the Eurovision. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, the worst thing about this pan-European poodle perm tune cull known to one and all as the Eurovision Song Contest is the suffering of the little children. Why is it that Countries like Luxembourg or Crete decide that children add some kind of vital element to their tuneless dirge. They don't. Children cannot sing. Ali Jones and Lena Zavaroni were freaks. You see, children can't 
can't truly express emotion unless they've suffered a life's lottery of love. Ugh. And when it comes to the lottery of love, children quite simply don't have the bulls for it. Now, it's true that Lenny Beige started his career at the age of eight, belting out show tunes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was born to be Lenny Beige, not a, not a, a water skiing instructor from Mykonos or, or a, a dental hygienist from Malmo. I was born to be Lenny Beige, showbiz legend. Scream showbiz in the warehouse, draped and ruched and curtains and joy. Well, so I, I quite like it the way it is actually. Well, no, I think it needs a bit of, needs a bit of pizzazz. It needs chutzpah. It needs. Lenny Beige. Oh wow! Everyone needs Lenny Beige. Yeah! yeah! You know, as I've watched these warehouse shows, it's become very clear to me that what they've tried to do is bring you, the people, variety. And you may well be screaming, but where are the Roger the Dogs? Where are the, the Orvilles, the, the Nookie Bears? They're nowhere, because they were caca. You know, I've spent the last 30 years as a, as a, a veteran of variety, up to the elbow in the cow's ass of British clubland, like some James Herriot of chutzpah trying to, trying to give birth to the bloody cuff of quality light entertainment. And you'd think that an old vet like me would be a, awarded with his own primetime television show, but <laughs> no. Instead, the schedules are stuffed full of young vets. You know, if they remade All Creatures Great and Small, it would it'd be like Baywatch with rubber gloves and straw rather than swimsuits and sand. And let's forget Christopher Timothy. <laughs> oh, you already have. James Harriet would probably be played by some young Swedish nymphette in a tight white coat and having trouble with her umlauts. You know, it's often been said that I'm a bit of an animal. Well, you know, I'm actually bits of lots of animals. I have the voice of a songbird, I have the legs of a gazelle, and the wedding equipment of an Arabian thoroughbred. And it doesn't take a David Attenborough to fill me in my natural habitat. You just point the camera in my direction, and I'll give you the kind of animal magic Johnny Morris could only dream of. What I'm proposing at the moment is to to get rid of Animal Hospital, let's have Celebrity Hospital. Wouldn't it be great to see Rolf Harris stroking the graying hair of Ian Lavender as he recovers from a hernia operation? Well, how about seeing Susie Quattro? who would be very much more appreciative of Rolf's avuncular presence at a bedside rather than a litter of sick pups. Now, let's dispense with Pet Rescue. I think the lovely Wendy Turner's talents could be put to better use with, uh, with, uh, Celebrity Rescue, where fading stars are given primetime television slots. It would be heartwarming to see the Beverly sisters smile as their bladder problems are given three minutes of primetime airspace. You know, basically it's disgusting that unwell animals are given so much airtime. Because if I really want to see a nauseous animal perform, I'll buy a ticket for a Marilyn Manson concert. Now from green, we move on to the number one.